Hi everyone and welcome back to NodeFlow. I'm Mario and today we'll focus on how to control our particles. We'll create together two different setups. The first one will be used to illustrate how to emit only from specific groups and from specific attributes. While as a second example, we'll create a spark system. Lastly, we'll go into Solaris and I will show you how I render my particles and we will make use of the new slab comps in Copernicus. With that said, I'm really excited for this class. So let's dive in Udini and let's start. Here I am in Udini and the first thing I would like to do is to create a Geonode. Once I have it, I will go inside and in this case I would like to have a more complex emitter, something that has an animation or some groups. So I will simply create a crack test geometry. And because the geometry is packed, I will also create an unpack node. And then I would like to create a simple pop net. Now you'll see that if I press play, we have just some particles spawning from our model. The reason why they are still is that we don't have any velocity initialized. So let's introduce our first new node and that's a pop force. Forces are essential and probably one of the most important thing in controlling particles and that will be the main topic of the next lesson. The pop force is the most simple and common one and we need to define a direction. We are going into minus z direction, so I will set it to minus 1 and press play. I will see my particles start moving in that direction. But the great thing of this node is that actually we can add some noise. So if I just set an amplitude to 1, you will see that the particles will also react to some noise and that will look a little bit more realistic overall. Now I can lower my amplitude to something like 0.5. Into the pop source I want to emit way less particles so into the birth tab I will just set something like a thousand for now and in the life expectancy I will set it to one so they will die just after one second. Let's also add a slight life variance so something like 0 0.3 so they don't die exactly after one second they have a little bit of randomization that looks a little bit better. But this lesson is all about control so let's say I want to emit only from a specific part of the model. You see I can go into the pop source and under the source tab I have a source group and I'm choosing the crack because we have already lots of groups so for instance if I choose head I will see that the head will be the only emitter for for this system. I could also momentarily go out, just create a merge node, move it here and connect my crack and my pop net. Now you'll see that we have only the head treated as an emitter. So I'll go inside and I'll just disable the source group because here we have an emission attribute. So let's see together how to create it. Outside, after the unpack, I will create an attribute of op. Very useful node and my favorite way to initialize a noise. So I'll create a turbulent noise. Every noise needs a position and for now we'll just connect it to the color so I will be able to see a result in the viewport. Also, don't forget to visualize it. I will momentarily disable the UV visualization and for now I think I can leave everything as default the only thing I would like to do is to add a fit because I would like to create a stronger contrast to do that I can manipulate the source minimum increase that slightly and lower the source maximum now of course I don't want to save it as a color that was just for visualization so I'll create a bind export so this would be my emission attribute I will just name it emit now I can go out let's visualize our pop net and let's go inside and I can now choose my emit attribute you will see that now the particles will be emitted based on a noise so that's again a very useful Useful control to manipulate the spawning of your of your particles and to give some extra randomness. So as this was my first example, if you want to push it to render, we can start adding an attribute adjust color. This node is very useful. If we set it to remap attribute and we set the attribute to something like age, I went for something that looked like magma and just inverted the ramp. So of course they look brighter when they spawn and then slowly they get to a darker value. So that's the result of the first setup we did today. So for now let's move this one aside as I want to create some sparks. Now create Creating sparks is not necessarily that complex, but it requires a knowledge of how to manipulate time. So for now, I will just create a pop net. I will not include any input for now, as I will create my emitter inside. So let me visualize it and go inside. Over here, we have a pop source, but I will delete it, as I will be using, in this case, a pop location. So if I press play, I will see basically my particles are already going in all possible directions. So first of all, I will reduce the amount to a thousand again, and the life expectancy, of course, should be reduced to so 0.15. And because in a spark, you have some of them that live for a lot more time than others, I will add a very strong life variance, so 0.14. But actually, to make it look like a spark, we need to understand the constant activation parameter. I will write simply $FF, so my frame number should be minor than 30. Now, if we press play, we'll see that our particle will spawn until frame 30 and then they will stop. That's a very simple way to control it. I want to expand this, adding an extra part to our expression, so I will say when this one is true, and by using this one, I will say end, my frame will be bigger than 50, they are allowed to spawn, so that means we have the same result as before but we'll also see they will start spawning after frame 50. In the case of a spark we need to say something like when the frame is modulo that we can define as a percentage sign of let's say 20 we need to activate so we need to say equal equal to 1. This means that every 20 frames the particle system will activate. 
you see that you already have a sort of like spark effect. Usually particles, when they fly with time, they tend to slow down. In order to introduce that, we need to create a pop drag. Now, this is one of the most common nodes and I actually advise you to put it in every single setup. In this case, I found that a very strong air resistance worked fine for me. So something like five, and now we can press play. It's a little bit hard to see, but they are slowing over time. Sparks leave a trail behind because they move very fast. So there is a node for that. And that's actually a trail node. You might know it. It's actually very useful for lots of things. It can also compute velocity if you just change the result type. But for now, we are using that to just create a trail for our particles. The values that worked best for me were a trail length of six and a tail increment of 0.3. Now, this is an artistic preference because I also like this kind of explosion effect. But for now, I will also introduce some gravity because I want to make something that looks a little bit more realistic. And you'll see once I add it, we have the same effect as before, but now the particles, of course, are being affected by gravity and they fall down. Of course, now we need a way to connect all these points together. And the best way is to add the add node. I love this node and also it's one of the oldest nodes in Udini. You can do lots of things with it. But in this case, the part I'm more interested in is where it says polygons by group. And you see, let me choose by attribute. Now I can define an attribute based on which I could link all these particles. Now, because in the particle simulation, we have lots of attributes, as we said in the first class, one of the most important one is the ID. And you see this particle can have an ID, let's say of three, all the replicated particles will have the same ID. And that's the logic based on which we'll connect all of them. So over here, I will say ID and what the particles will have the same ID, they will be connected together. Now the effect is almost completed. I would like to add some colors. So an attribute that just color is my preferred way of doing that. Let's go again into remap attribute and age is the one that makes more sense. For this kind of scenarios, I tend to use the magma preset. Of course, I invert it. Now by pressing play, we can appreciate already the effect working pretty nicely. The lines looks a little bit too polygonal. Now this of course will never be noticed when you render because it will be so fast but just because I tend to be again a little bit picky I like to add a smooth note just after my color. It's a very slight effect but I think it looks a little bit more interesting. You see before and after. Also the effect should not be too strong so maybe maybe adding a little bit of filter quality on top will help. If I create a, a null for now over here and I will just name this one out sparks. Now you can just copy this node and then I will create a lop net. If we go inside you will see that if I create a stop import and I will just paste my last node, they will look like that. So if you don't know how to manipulate the width attribute, you will have very weird results. So let's go back and see how to fix that. So for now, I will create a resample. I will not use the resample just to add extra points as I'm not interested in that. So I'll just remove the maximum segment left. What I want to do is to export the curve view attribute. Now with an attribute wrangle, we'll write just a few lines of code. So I will say that the width, or in this case, we can also use the P scale, it's equal to a channel ramp my ramp should be called simply with and I want to control my ramp based on the curve view attribute. So over here, I will just write at curve view. By closing my parentheses and closing my line, I can actually go to Solaris. It will make a little bit more sense. You'll see they disappear. So if I just pin this viewport, so it will stay in Solaris and now I go out, I can very simply define the scale if I click here. You see now it will be a lot, but the reality is that it's simply reading this value. So because it's very sensible, I will also introduce a multiplier. I can just multiply this one by CHF and inside I will just need to define a name for my parameter. In this case, it's a multiplier. So I can just call it amount, close it and I'm done. So of course it's multiplying by zero. We need to initialize our parameter. And if we multiply by a very small number, like 0 0.01, we definitely have a way more controllable setup with this RAM. So what I want to achieve is something that looks a little bit like that. Okay, let's go into Solaris. We already have our particles imported. If you don't see them, of course, it's maybe because you have to go back. They will only be present for some part of the timeline. And I want to give them a material. So I will just create a simple material library. I want to assign it to my particles. So I will say assign to geometry. And over here, I will choose my curves and click OK. That's great. But now we need to create a material inside. So Karma Material Builder. As you can see, the color changed because you are assigning this material already. I want to name it Sparks and we can go inside. The most important parameter that I need for this effect is emission. So I will just create an unlit material. I will connect it instead of the materials on the surface. And I can basically remove all the rest. Of course, we liked our colors from before. So let's see together how we can import them again. There is a node called Geometry Color. This node will automatically read the CD attribute from SOPS. So I will connect it to Emission Color. You will see it's already working, although maybe we need to render. Let's see if it looks already a little bit better. And it does, it's still, it's still reading the color correctly, as you can see. And now we have our color, and the way I would like to control my emission is just by duplicating this one. So we're reading the same color as before, but I will convert that to a float, so to a black and white version. And by connecting this one to emission, we have a more natural distribution. Now I can press Shift S to organize my graph a little bit better. And what I would like to do, of course, is adding a multiplier to define how strong 
the emission should be. And for now, I will set it to something like two. We can now go out. So I think I like this angle. So I will just click on camera over here. That will create a camera based on the angle I'm facing now. I'll just move it slightly. Then I will add the camera under settings and the render rope. I will connect all of that to my camera. And I could already press render and the effect will look pretty nice. But I need to do a few little things. First of all, I will switch that to XPU. Then into my image output, I need to enable the utility depth LV. If you don't add it, the next step will not work. Now it's finally time to add a copy. So Copnet is one of the newest systems in Udini and used in the context of renders, it allows us to do stuff like a slab comp. So for instance, let me just render and I need to go inside and create something called a slab comp block. This is sort of like a for loop and inside between these two, we can add our effects. As you can see by default, it's reading also depth. So let me create something like glow. I will connect my color and I will also output. My color by default you will not see anything at all happening and that's because we need to activate the visualization of a slab comp in the viewport so with this button we can just click and we already start seeing some glow right you can see before and after so the values i ended up using it's a very 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 low glow threshold so something like 0 0.001 a stronger brightness and of course this glow is way more open than what it should be so with this scale we can reduce it until we find a result that is a little bit more appealing so i think that's something like that looks already a little bit better but there is a little thing and that's very important you will go here and set like a specific frame range from 1 to 240 but before clicking on render to disk you need to go into slab comp and say that you want to use a specific copnet as a slab comp if you don't do that you will never see the glow effect on top when you export it on the disk so let's go into Slap comp. We don't want to use a file, we want to use a cop network. I can choose my cop net block and one. Once you do that, you will be set to render everything to disk. So you can just click here and enjoy the result. So that was a little bit of a more intense class in what we saw today. I would like you to use this rendering setup as a base for the next tutorials. So you will be able to create an output for each single lesson. That's the reason why I am explaining that only in the second lesson. So if you learned something new, please consider subscribing. And I will see you next week with a new video and a new challenge. Thanks.